So in today's video, what I'm going to be talking about is what I always have in my camera bag, no matter where I go, and what things I've learned to do and not to do when building up your photography equipment. Hi, I'm David and welcome to today's video. So building up your photography equipment uh, can be quite expensive and the good thing to do is to actually build it up piece by piece over the years because as I'm sure most people are that you can't just go out right away and buy all the equipment you want to get. So what I'm going to do in this video is talk through the kind of things I always have in my camera bag but also some of the things I've learned to actually avoid getting right away and the kind of best place to put your money when you're starting out. So the first thing in my camera bag obviously would be the camera itself. Now I currently shoot on a Nikon D810 and I can't actually show you that right now because I'm filming on it as we speak. However I can tell you that it's a full frame camera and I did originally start out shooting on a Nikon D3000. Um, the D3000 I think it's a D3500 are both great entry level cameras if you're looking for something to start you off. But once you find yourself maybe pushing the limits of these cameras, it's always great to push up to a full frame one because you're going to just get more resolution in your images, but also really get the most out of some of the lenses too. Um, so what I can show you at the moment though is this lens here, which I recommend to get if you're just starting out, and that is the Nikon 50mm f1.8 lens. Now, there's two things that are great about this lens. The first thing is, is that f1.8 aperture. That really wide aperture really allows you to not only just blur the background images, really get a lot of light into your camera, and it's great for just if you're shooting some more sort of uh, fast moving subjects, things like that. It's just a really great lens to have. And um, the other great thing about it is because it's a fixed focal length of 50 millimeters, what it does is it actually gets you to become a better photographer actually moving your position when you're shooting something. Because it's what you'll probably find is when you start out at first that you do have these uh, zoom lenses of some kind, usually like a 34 to 70 millimeter or something like that. And it's really easy that if you're not quite sure about the composition, it's to just zoom in on the lens itself, just actually move your hand. But the best thing to always do is actually move your feet first because even though moving, adjust, adjusting the focal length can help the composition and things like that, it's great to actually move around. I always think that's a great way to actually become a better photographer is just actually move your feet first before you think about adjusting your lens. So the next piece of equipment I'm going to talk about in my camera bag is again actually the one I'm shooting on at the moment, but it's the Nikon 24 to 70 millimeter lens, and it's an f 2.8 lens as well. Now the great thing about that lens is that whilst it's not a sort of super wide angle lens, a 24 millimeter really gives me that option to just you know really get some really good landscape shots with it, and because it goes up to 70 millimeters as well, it's a really nice just sort of mid-range lens to have uh, in your bag because it can do it a lot of different situations. Now, you may be tempted at first to always go with a sort of maybe like a super telephoto lens and you think a longer focal lens, you think the longer the better, but that's not always the case. And I can say that lens I'm shooting at the moment, the 24 to 70, is actually a great thing I always have in my bag because it can just be used for any situation. There's a couple of lenses I have in there that I only really take out if I really know what I'm going to be shooting and what I'm aiming for, but the 24 to 70 millimeter is the one I'll just always have in my bag because it's such a versatile lens. So if you are starting out, it's good to get yourself a 24 to 70 millimeter one. So the next lens I'm going to talk about is this one here, which is the Sigma 105 millimeter macro lens. Now, macro photography might seem at first a bit kind of specialized, but I would really recommend if you can afford one, always have a macro lens in your bag. The reason for that is it just kind of opens up a whole new world of photography for you because you just won't get the same level of de detail and the same level of magnification um, by using other lenses, no matter what the focal length is on them. The macro lens really allows you just to fill the frame of uh, your camera with just even the smallest objects and it's always a great thing to go into. I mean, as I say, only if you can really afford it because if you don't then Whilst it is good as maybe like a portrait lens and some other um, situations like that, it is obviously a nice one just to have in your bag as a bonus rather than a necessity. 
So the next thing I always have in my camera bag is this here. This is an LED light which you can fix to the top of your camera. I'll put the details in the description below but it's a Viltrox L116T. But what I've really found great about this is that I'm not really a big fan of shooting with flash. And the reason for that is that I don't really like the harsh shadows you get from it or if you do it outside when it's a bit cloudier I don't really like that kind of you can just tell that sort of artificial light is there so don't get me wrong obviously flash is a good thing to use and if you do it properly it can be great but it's something I tend to avoid unless I really have to use it. What I really found with this though is this allows me just to give me a little bit extra light without necessarily having to go to the flash and without it being very obvious either because you can adjust it on the back in terms of one, the warmth of the light and how strong it is to really allow you just to get the situation just right, just to lighten up the subject a little bit just in case you're shooting in kind of dull or low light conditions. So the final lens I'm going to talk about today is this one here, and this is the Tamron 70-200mm to lens. Now, the great thing with this lens here is that, again, similar to my Sigma lens, it shows that you can actually get some really great results by looking beyond just your own manufacturer's lenses. So even though I'm shooting on Nikon, Tamron, Sigma, other manufacturers have a lot of great lenses too, and the great thing you can do with them is actually pick them a lot cheap, pick them up a lot cheaper, and also especially if you do like I have, and that's gone second hand. Now, the great thing about the lens is that even though you think with a 200 millimeter zoom on it that uh, you might think of maybe some sort of maybe nature photography or things like that, if you want to get a good zoom, it's probably not long enough for that. But what I've actually found that's great about it is it's great for portrait shots. And I managed to get some really great portrait shots with this lens. And it's something I thoroughly recommend you have in your bag because if you can just have your 14 to, or sorry, your 24 to 70 millimeter lens and put this in the 70 to 200, you've got a really great focal length there to start you off. And that will get you some nice ones, as I say, both in terms of landscape shots and in portraits and some other things in between. So I can't recommend this enough, or even as I say, just having a lens and that focal length in your bag. So obviously on top of those lenses, there are a lot of little miscellaneous things that I have in my bag. So obviously big things like a tripod, which I always make it you have, um, and also a lens cleaning kit too. But if you really are starting out to build up your photography equipment, I would always recommend is putting a lot of your money into the lens itself, because the lens is where you're gonna get a lot of uh, value for money. Also, the great thing is that if you put yourself the money in the lenses, even if you're starting off, on an entry level DSLR, if you upgrade to a full frame one, then you can keep using those lenses with that camera and that's always a great thing to do. So it's not as if you're just putting the money into the lenses, get a new camera and suddenly you need to change everything about your camera bag and your equipment. You can keep using those lenses and still continue to get great results. So there it is, there are all the things I have in my camera bag and no matter where I go and what I'm shooting. Probably the only thing in there I would say that I don't always take out with me is the 70 to 200 millimeter Tamron. That's just because of the weight of the lens. But to be fair, I still have it in there most of the time. Um, let me know in the comments below what kind of things you have in your camera bag and what things you would always take with you no matter where you're going. And if you did like this video, please do like and subscribe.